Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello everyone and welcome to Outreach Connection. I am Sandy Axton, your host, and we are blessed to have you with us today. But before I introduce my guest, I would like for us to turn to Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, where it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're to do, is to preach the gospel to everyone. I had recently uh, was blessed to speak for something, and I had made mention about in the Word of God where it talks about going into the highways and the hedges and, and you know, compelling them to come. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do a little research on that, kind of you know, get some of that searched out. And you know what I found out? What I decided was that everywhere, no matter where we're at, where we walk, where we look, we're to reach everywhere and bring the gospel to everyone. Well, my guest today is Evangelist Bob Newton from Powerhouse Ministries, and it's so good to have you, Bob, it's good, today. Good to be back. I think it's been about a year since we've been it with you. It has been that long I'm that I've been excited to be been here, it's and I love that scripture. Yes. The Great Commission, go into all the world. Yes, preach everywhere. The gospel. Where that door opens, step into it. And it very I heard works. an old time preacher say that our, our walk of faith has two words, okay. come and go. Right. Come to him that are heavy laden, but yeah. once you've been restored and refreshed, then you got to go. Right. Take Christ to the world. So that's it. That's, I love that. Uh, that's, that's a, a good opening scripture. And that is a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. So we, of course, you're, we know you around WTJR here very much so. They I mean, put up with me. Well, we, we just, <laughs> we, we really like you around here. But uh, you're getting ready. You're celebrating 20 years of tent ministry. Yes, ma'am. That's phenomenal. Yes. Do you have any idea how many people that you have touched? No, I was, I was thinking years? on the way down. I have no idea. No. I have no idea. The vast uh, people. We, we uh, were doing a little pre-service uh, audio thing that we're going to play every night, celebrating 20 years. And, you know, we have a lot of white chairs. That's our chairs. They're white. They're fold, foldable chairs, tent chairs. And we had a family donate those chairs to us the, the first year, the Fulmer family, who was wow. a big impact in my life. They actually helped me get my first tent. And then they donated, I believe it was 200 chairs. And we still have many of those chairs. We've wow. lost a few along the way. Uh -huh. uh, and I was thinking about that today because some of them was sitting uh, in, in our offices when I left this morning. I don't know how many lives have sat in those chairs. Right. Been transformed and changed. Yes. And, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just the result yeah. of the gospel. Yes. Because when that goes forth, it's not going to come back void. No, You're no, gonna, it's, no. It, there will be a response. So the odds are when somebody comes yeah. this uh, tent revival that they may sit in a chair where many lives have been changed over the 20 years. Wow. So <laughs> yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. So you're going to, there will be one coming up mm -hmm. real quick here in West mm -hmm. Quincy. And so the dates of that again is May 30th. In May 30th through June the 4th. Okay. 7 p.m. nightly. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to do a special uh, leadership training Saturday afternoon at 2.30 under the tent with Dr. Ron Brees. Okay. And so we're excited. We have a guest speaker uh, being my 20th year each city. I'm bringing in a guest speaker that's impacted my life and uh, Sister Angela Gazaway from uh, Kansas City, Missouri uh, mm -hmm. is going to be speaking Friday night. She's a powerful woman of God. So Wonderful. Then Pastor Kenny Geisendover Saturday night. Then mm -hmm. we have worship with Jeff and April Davis. Mm -hmm. So we're just we're in special singing every 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 night. We're going to have somebody special singing. So it's going to be a great time. That it will be. Yes. That, that will be. And there's just something about g gathering under an, a tent. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a history. There's a lot of yes. history there yes. 
um, when you think of the mighty revivals that have mm -hmm. came through the years, how that they began in tent revivals. Yes. You know, yeah, too. I think the tent uh, is, uh, has a twofold purpose mm -hmm. in this time that we're in. First, it's nostalgic for a lot of us right. that you know have been serving the Lord. There's memories, some of my great memories of being a kid going to tent meetings. Uh -huh. But also, there's a whole new generation that, that is experiencing it for the first time and experiencing the atmosphere. Because there's an anointing under the tent that's yes. just, it's different. Uh -huh. It's different. And I think a lot of it is the excitement of preparing for it, mm -hmm. the work, putting it up, getting it ready, right. the guys coming in together, you know, the sponsoring churches along with our team and working together and working hard to put it up, laughing and enjoying the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about that preparing it. Mm -hmm. I always think of uh, in the wilderness when they raised the tabernacle. Right. You know, the excitement knowing yes. that God was going to show up. Mm -hmm. Man, I feel that right there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, after all these years, I still get excited about it. Right. You know, once we get it up and the tent's empty and there's 200 some chairs are sitting out there. And, you know, I, I'm kind of OCD. I like them in the right row. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'll go through the tent after everybody's out and I'll just, you know, touch every chair and pray. And right. just wondering what God's going to do this week, you know, that week right. in that city. Yes. So it, it's different because you're taking the gospel outside. Right. R. W. Schambach prayed over me, and he was one of the last great tent preachers. And uh, he said, "Son, when you preach, preach to the atmosphere." He said, wow. "No matter how many people's under the tent, right. preach to the atmosphere of that city." Mm -hmm. And so I, I think of that often. So yeah, it, it's a different experience. Yeah, definitely. It's a different experience. <laughs> definitely. So you 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 have numerous places lined up uh, for this summer and stuff coming up and yes, everything too. Yes, we're, we're doing uh, eleven cities this year. Eleven cities, wow. Yeah, and we're uh, we're going to some smaller places that that we really have kind of put off because just you know just because of schedule over the years and, and finances and you know mm -hmm. it's harder to to go into smaller cities or smaller places. So we're adding some of them because some of them, uh, some of them churches have been real faithful to us, just praying for us, supporting us. Mm -hmm. So we're going into some areas this year, put it on the schedule, and so we're going to have the big tent up. Our tent, you can put it different sizes. Okay. So here in West Quincy will be the largest it can be, mm -hmm. and but some of the cities or some of the churches that we're going to are smaller, so we can make the tent smaller to adjust oh, you know, to size. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be need. Prayer is going to be needed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause yes. it's a lot of work and a lot of yeah. spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, the devil doesn't want the gospel preached. That's, that's uh, it. Doesn't want truth preached. Right. Doesn't want hope. I'm a hope dealer. That's what I yeah. call myself. A okay, hope dealer. good. Yeah, that's, that's it, The enemy doesn't that's want us good. to bring hope. <laughs> right, right. And so we're excited. Yeah, 11 cities, starting with West Quincy. Then we go to a little town called Keswick, Iowa. And we go from there to Sydney, Ohio. Uh, Palmyra, Indiana, I was just <laughs> telling you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I better quit because I won't miss a moment. Well, that's yeah. all right. That's all right. So, but you, you've done it. I mean, you've, uh, you minister uh, to so many people and right, uh, God has used you uh, many a times in the giftings and so forth. Uh, can, can we maybe just back up a little bit mm -hmm. and just relate, allow the people to know you maybe that has not okay. been able, been blessed to be in one of your tent revivals or okay. uh, one of your Revive America services mm -hmm. or something. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your beginning and your calling? Well, I grew up life? a Pentecostal preacher's son. Okay. So I grew up in the Pentecostal environment mm -hmm. and I, I cherish my heritage. Uh -huh. I, I believe, I believe I'm a full gospel preacher, so I believe that the book of Acts is for the church. Yeah. I believe God sent help to the church mm -hmm. to empower the church and mm -hmm. to develop us as individuals through the fruits of the Spirit and also use us through the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so I grew up in that setting and as a young boy, uh, went with my parents to a tent meeting. 
And I don't know what it was about that tent meeting because I was in church all the time because my right. dad would do revivals or if he pastored, he had revivals. And that was back when you had Sunday morning, Sunday night, you had Wednesday night, had uh, maybe Saturday night service. I mean, we was in church all the time. Uh -huh. But there was something about that tent meeting that just really captivated me and just wow. really, I, I just loved it, loved everything about it just as a, a young kid. And when I, you know, from that point on, I would play church. You know, I would, you know, yeah. I would I had a little guitar and act like I was preaching, you know, and I, uh -huh. you know, if we had family get togethers, I'd get all my aunts and uncles and preach yeah. to them, play my guitar <laughs> and, you know, just dreamed about being a preacher, being a tent preacher. Yeah. And, and then when I got older, uh, my dad stopped preaching and he was kind of helping. We just got plugged into a church in a little town called Fredonia and they would do a huge camp meeting every year thousands you know people come from all over america wow. and so i got to help put that tent up every year as a teenager and just you know just be in that setting and mm -hmm. learn how it worked to learn how it operated you know then then i got away from the lord in my late teens and 20s and run from the call of god and just you know ended up uh ended up a drug addict ended up homeless and just you know just really Missed up my life and, and mm -hmm. come back to the Lord. Uh -huh. And when I came back to the Lord, met my beautiful wife, which we knew each other all our life, you know, and God just, you know, He had a plan. He did. And we, you know, she grew up in ministry, preacher's daughter, so she understood ministry and it just, God put us together. And, and I just, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to be a tent preacher. Uh -huh. And I saved up every dime I had, every penny bought my first tent 20 years ago. Wow. It was just a little Twice. tent and we put it up and I slept on the platform. So I'd preach <laughs> and there were nights there'd be five people, uh -huh. maybe seven people, Right. you know, uh, and I would preach and I had an air mattress, put it on the platform. I'd sleep on the platform, get up in the morning and, and you know, just that's what I did in, in the summers of early in my ministry and God's blessed us. We went through four tents uh, and you know this is our final tent. I believe we're just going to wear this out until uh -huh. Jesus comes back. Right. Uh, but that's kind of over the years. I believe God honored my faithfulness. That's it. And he did. just you know put a good team around me. Mm -hmm. Back then I didn't have a team. It was just me. Uh -huh. And you know I put the tent up and preach that night. I can't do that now. But uh -huh. I did it back then. And you know God's blessed us with trucks and trailers. We run. You know, it takes quite a bit to move what we have now. Oh, sure. And it's just amazing how God took uh, a young kid who just was in love with tent ministry. And yeah. I, I love the way the preacher preached with authority and the power of God and the demonstration of God. And there's an anointing where, you know, you see deliverance, right. which is needed today. People are tormented yes. by devils today. Mm -hmm. And you, there's some things you just can't counsel out, no. talk out. You just right. got to let the Holy Spirit, the yes. blood of Jesus deliver. Yes. So, you know, that happens in our tents. Mm -hmm. For some reason, demon possessed people like tents. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> uh, people get free from addictions, mm -hmm. alcoholism, uh, just, uh, just, just an environment that's exciting. Uh -huh. And so that's kind of my journey. And, you know, so when, when you come to the tent, you're, you're seeing a dream of a, a young boy come to true, yeah. come, come true. Yeah. You know, and it's just God's come been good to, to me. You know, that starting out and saving nickels and dimes and pennies. Where I live, we can, you can turn in pop cans for five cents. So I did that and everything I could yeah. to buy that first tent. And now, you know, we're looking at a summer where we're going to have a budget about $55,000 to take the gospel. And, wow. and, you know, it's just amazing what God's yeah. done yes. to be able to move. We're like a Holy Ghost circus. We just right. truck some just trailers. And <laughs> the spirit just goes right yeah, with you. Yeah. So, no, you leave it there, but you, yeah, you take, yeah, yeah. takes it with, it with so, you So, you know, and, and, and it's just exciting. So that's kind of my story. Yeah, and, and, uh, that is awesome. You know, I believe evangelists are a big part of the church, the fivefold ministry. They are. And, you know, for a long time in, mm -hmm. in a lot of re, uh, Christian circles in America, the evangelists have been put aside. Uh, but I believe what our role is we're the salesmen of the kingdom. Yeah. We take the gospel out, the Great Commission, go yeah. into all the world, yes. outreach, and we share the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so under the tent, you're going to have seasoned saints 
But then you're going to have people that that won't walk in the door of a church, but they'll come under that tent and, and because they feel they yeah. feel like they can get out quick or they, right. quick or feel safe. Right. But then the gospel gets them hooked. Right. You know? right. So uh, right. last year we had an atheist. Uh, she wow. came to a meeting. Her boyfriend brought her. He got saved a few nights before, and uh, both of them struggling with drugs. Uh, she told him. She said, "I don't believe in God." I don't, you know, she looked mm -hmm. me up on probably Revive America, found me on YouTube. Uh -huh. She told her boyfriend, that, that guy's fake. I don't believe in all that stuff. And that night she came to that tent and it was packed full and she sat in the back with her boyfriend. And the Lord, I preached and, and when I got done preaching, the Bible said signs will follow the preaching of the word of the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord told me the gifts of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, you know, those are all part of the working of the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. The Lord said, go back to that redhead lady and tell her this thing's real. Yeah. I said, okay, Lord. So I go back there and I said, I said, woman, I don't know nothing about you, but the Lord told me to tell you that this is real. Yeah. And when I said that, she, she ran to the altar and wow. gave her heart to Jesus. And right. she testified later. She said, I woke up an atheist today. But I'm going home. I'm going to bed tonight, a Christian. Uh huh. And so uh, that's just that is you awesome. just never know who's going to walk under the tent. You don't. <laughs> you don't. And just like you stated earlier, some people won't darken the church doors, mm -hmm. but they'll walk into a yes. tent. Yes. Yes. And so that's that's an awesome ministry of of openness there that people mm -hmm. will just it brings down barriers. Yes. It yes. does. They'll just step in. Amen. That is awesome. Amen. That is wonderful. So we are, we are excited for this year. Yeah. I don't know how many more years we have of doing this, uh, but we're just gonna, we're gonna do it big this year and just Good. preach the gospel and reach as many people as we, as we can and, and see what the Lord is gonna do. Right. It's exciting. It is, that is <laughs> exciting. That is such a, a needed ministry. Mm -hmm. and, but like you said, so um, impactful, but yet it's unique too you know it's it's a you just don't hear of them mm -hmm. as much and yeah. but it's just phenomenal how the tent ministry has been such a a blessing so you're going to be in west quincy so we want to pull everybody mm -hmm. out yes yes <laughs> get yes, there we wanna, we've been coming i'm not sure how many years i'm wanting to say about seven seven or eight we've been coming setting up at the old driving theater grounds there. Uh -huh. uh, but I would love to see a great turnout this year. Yes. And just just see a lot of people come and really support it. A crowd will draw a crowd. Yes. And it will so people will see. get curious when they see, you know, a big crowd. Uh -huh. So I want to encourage everyone that's watching, please come yeah. and be a part of it. And uh, yeah, I believe you'll walk away with the touch of the Lord. Yeah. Or their yeah. lives can be yes. changed. Yes, yes in an instant and deliverance you know do have you in ministering in this area like that too what are some of the areas you know we hear so much about people's minds today yes you know that they're just um they need the the word of god mm -hmm. and so how are, as far as the different ones that you are ministering to what are some of the things that you feel you're seeing, and it's a frequent, possibly, area that you're I'm ministering seeing, to. I'm seeing a lot of people struggling with anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. fear. Yeah. Uh, I believe those are spirits that have really been unleashed on this generation. Mm -hmm. And I, even since COVID, it right. is, even church people struggling with fear and anxiety. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of young people uh, mm -hmm. You know, the early tent years in America, they came out of the Great Depression. God raised up men like A. Allen, Oil Roberts, uh, uh, you know, Jack Cole. Some, and back, back in those days, there was a lot of physical healings, right. miracles took place. That's what's associated with the tent. Right. Mm -hmm. But I believe right now what, what the need is, because the Spirit of God moves towards the need. Yes. That's what I believe. Right. He knows the need of a time or a season. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, yes, there's physical things that, that God can do. But right now, the greatest miracles or healings we're seeing is like emotional. Right. Uh, mental. Mm -hmm. And God's really moving because this is really a tormented generation. It is. They're tormented in their minds, in their mm -hmm. spirit. 
uh, vexed by things uh, mm -hmm. uh, that life uh, afflictions, generational stuff. Right. So we're seeing a lot of, uh, of real spiritual miracles happening there mm -hmm. and healings happening. And, and we've seen physical healings, but that's a lot of what we're seeing because right. there's a bound up generation. And I believe it's a plan of the enemy to bind up the sons and daughters of this time mm -hmm. because Jesus is coming back. Right. And uh, the signs are there. Mm -hmm. It's unfolding. But before he comes back, there's going to be a generation. Joel said that he's going to pour out his spirit. Right. And the sons and the daughters, that's our children, our grandchildren. Right. That's right. this generation on the earth. Yeah. They're, they're going to see a great move of God. And yeah. they're going to have a prophetic voice. Yes. A sound. Mm -hmm. a, a sound that's going to come out of this generation that the enemy is really trying to, to torment them to stop that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the old timer said, I read the back of the book and we win. We win. <laughs> we win. We know it. <laughs> and, and I believe the work of the Holy Ghost and preachers that will preach with the power of God, demonstrate right. the Spirit of God, that we're going to see, a, a re, we're seeing a real deliverance. There's a revival happening in our nation right now uh -huh. on college campuses. I got the privilege to walk on that college campus, be there in that revival. Yeah. And it's happening in youth groups and youth camps, right? Yes. And, and so there is a move of God that's taking place. Mm -hmm. And God is setting a generation free because there, there has to be a sound yeah. that's come forth before the return of Jesus Christ. He's yeah. not coming back. He's not coming back for a beat up church. No. He's coming back for a glorious church. No matter right. what label we got, uh -huh. we're all the church of God. We're all mm -hmm. His church. Right. You know, we separate ourselves by labels, mm -hmm. but we are the church. He mm -hmm. loves every one of us. Uh -huh. He died for us. He said, I come to build this thing called the church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Mm -hmm. So we're all the church and we're going to leave this world with a glorious church mm -hmm. and we're going to make a difference. Make We're going to go in the world and preach yeah. the gospel. Amen. Uh -huh. I'm about Amen. to have church. Hey, Hallelujah. Let's, let's <laughs> keep going. Let's just keep going. Put some more <laughs> word in there. I feel like I'm taking up most of your time. Here. No, no, no. I want you, I want you to talk. <laughs> well, you know, we, when we were visiting a little bit about this uh, mm -hmm. program today, you had made mention that you feel like uh, this is a sustained revival. Yeah. Yeah, Let's talk about that a minute. Right. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's what I've been declaring Feeling. in our meetings yeah. and, and just sensing in my spirit that this is going to be a time of sustained revival. Uh -huh. And, you know, I really question the Lord, you know, what, what, how, how we do this? What, mm -hmm. what is this? Because I've seen revival come and go. I've seen this, you know, evangelist comes, we mm -hmm. get excited, have a good series of meetings, then kind of go back to the same old thing. And the Spirit of God brought me to the story in 2 Kings, real quick, chapter 3. Uh -huh. uh, three nations, three nations, one enemy. Okay. No matter what labels on our door, whether we're Baptist, Pentecostal, Charismatic, whatever we want to call ourselves, mm -hmm. we all have one enemy, no right. matter what age we are. Yep. Young, old, there's one enemy, Satan. Mm -hmm. He's out to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And so they had one common enemy that brought them together, and they sought the Lord. And Elisha uh, comes and he speaks and he, he prophesies and he said, this valley is going to be full of ditches. Make this valley full of ditches. He said, there's going to be water. Okay. The drought's going to end. Uh -huh. In other words, revival's coming. Mm -hmm. Revival's going to be here. And, and when I read that, I've preached out of that many times, but I, I really felt the Lord speak to my heart how we sustain revival in us is that we've got to dig a, a ditch. You dig a ditch to give access, to right. give water yes. access to, a, a, to an area. Mm -hmm. And so we spiritually, we must become revival by saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to allow you into every area of my life. I'm mm -hmm. going to dig a spiritual ditch mm -hmm. to this area of my life and allow you to water me, refresh me. Mm -hmm. uh, the kingdom of God's made up of righteousness, Mm -hmm. uh, peace, joy in the Holy, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to pursue, I'm going to work until the Spirit of God can reach those areas of my life. Right. That I don't lose the Spirit of God. I don't lose revival. Mm -hmm. That I keep the, the peace of God's in me. I just got to keep it watered. Right. The joy of the Holy Spirit's in me. Yeah. I got to keep it watered. Righteousness is in me. Right. I've got to keep it watered. Uh -huh. I've got to allow the Holy Spirit or the, the Holy Ghost to work in my life. Mm -hmm. He 
He is the work that revives us, mm -hmm. keeps us fresh. Right. A lot of times we think revival, if we get the right evangelist in, we have the right kind of music, right. we do the right series of, but revival has to become ours. Right. And when we become revival and we allow the Holy Ghost to have access to those areas of our life and mm -hmm. keep us watered, mm -hmm. amen. Right. Uh, because the enemy wants to, once those areas, he wants peace to become dormant in your life. Mm -hmm. He wants joy to become dormant. Mm -hmm. Righteousness, that means right, right standing, relationship, fellowship. Right. He wants those areas of your, our life to, to become dormant and dry. Mm -hmm. wanna, I, I'm, I'm tired of living that way. Yeah. I don't want to have three good months and two bad ones. I, don't, no. I, want, I believe revival could be sustained in yes. me. Amen. So that, and that's what I'm sensing in my spirit. That's what I'm challenging myself right. to do is say, you know, I'm going to dig a ditch. Right. Yeah. The Holy Ghost to get in that area of my life. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want bitterness to become rooted. I don't want unforgiveness. Don't want right. sorrow, hopelessness, fear, yeah. anxiety. I want the Spirit of God working in my life. Yeah. I believe Christians ought to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them need to notify their face they're happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and find that hope and peace yes, in Him. Yes. Oh, it has to be yes. something continual. Amen. We're talking about digging ditches, and you know, Elijah type of deal. Where, you know bringing in the water and then filling it, but he was expecting the fire yeah. to fall. Yes. And, yes. you know, a lot of times we re re relate yeah. revival as it being the, the fire of the Spirit, you Amen. know, Amen. the Holy Ghost, yes. and He'll move in when, yes. when we take ourselves Amen. and allow God to Amen. use and this, be where we need to be yeah, with man. Him. The <laughs> second thing I've really, the Lord's been speaking to me about preaching in my meetings is on Pentecost and the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. Yeah. And, and because uh, a lot of people struggle with the Holy Ghost because of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. but you know, uh, every, every nation has a culture and that culture has a language. Mm -hmm. And when they lose that language, they lose that culture. Yeah. And God has given us a kingdom language, and it's our it culture. Uh -huh. And we need the Spirit of God today we do. more we than do. ever. We and, do. And the work, of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows what to do when I don't know what to do. That's it. And it you know, does. sometimes I don't know how to be a preacher, but the Spirit of God does. He does. You know, yep. the Lord knows. Jesus knows how to do it. <laughs> yes, He does, and He will. It's been exciting to be with you today. Hey, it's good to have it's you. It's what and, my fast. <laughs> yeah, it always is when it's when we're going good. We're getting into the Word and stuff, but uh, uh, but we're excited about the tent revival that's mm -hmm. coming up May thirtieth through June fourth. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's going to be some great things. People's lives yes, are going to be changed. Yes. Amen. And it's not that far to West Quincy. No, it's not. Wherever join you may us. be, come and join. Join us from <laughs> Keokuk, Knox City, Macomb, wherever. Come and join us under the tent. That would be wonderful. Yes. Come and yes. let the Lord make the difference in your life. Amen. So thank you're, you so you're much. You're a good host. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lord bless. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.